Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the CNC with Dave show. We're on episode number 11, I believe. And uh, tonight we're going to do a something we haven't ever done before. We're kind of going to do a show and tell. I've asked folks to send in, um, to email me photos of some of their favorite CNC projects. And I had a whole bunch of people uh, send a whole bunch of pictures. So uh, we've got a lot to go through tonight. I'm going to have my distinguished panel be the judges, and we're going to give away some uh, gift cards for the, uh, I don't know, the coolest project or most creative or whatever. We'll think of some kind of topic to, uh, to use for judging. But I'm going to let my panel uh, decide on that, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get started looking at that here in just a minute. I do have one little announcement. I wanted to say a very happy birthday to Nancy Clarity. That's Russ Clarity's wife. Uh, I hope Russ is uh, taking you out and spending some big bucks on you today, Nancy. And uh, don't worry, your secret's safe. I'm not going to tell anybody that you're 50, so uh, don't, no worries there. Uh, okay, uh, I want to start off, I guess, Mike Mursky is joining us tonight. Uh, and, and I know Mike's got something he wants to, uh, to talk about real quick, so we'll... Uh, give Mike the floor for a minute and let him uh, talk about his little special projects he's got going on. Hey, how's everyone doing? Mike Mertzke, Mertzke Custom Woodworking. I uh, just wanted to give an update. Um, for those of you that don't know, we're doing a, um, a GoFundMe um, uh, campaign for the Falcon Children's Home. It's uh, um, an orphanage um, here in uh, Falcon, North Carolina. And uh, the the purpose of the GoFundMe page is to raise some money. Um, we're in the process of putting together a wood shop for them. Uh, update on that, we actually, uh, John got all the stuff from Grizzly Ordered um, for the, the, with the grant money that we did get for the kind of traditional woodworking tools. But the GoFundMe is, is for a uh, technology corner that we're trying to put in for the kids and that'll have a, a laser engraver, a 3D printer, um, already um, got some stuff in motion to have something very big and safety orange uh, in that corner of the shop we'll be uh, installing but um, you know just under raised so far and um, you know just appreciate uh, everyone kind of passing the word and uh, you know help them where you can yeah Mike I saw uh John post on Facebook today. It looks like what was it? Uh, I, I don't want to name the wrong store, but he got somebody to donate uh, uh, and a big air compressor. Looked like yeah, the local Lowe's here, uh, and it wasn't at corporate level. The actual local one, um, they donated uh, one of their floor models. Um, but yeah. That, Pretty big yeah. air compressor, so yeah, yeah, that looked really nice. He had a picture of him on Facebook standing in front of it, and it looked uh, looked like a pretty good sized one. So good for uh, good for Lowe's. And and we've got some other local people here that are, that are donating different tools and stuff like that. I've been contacted by a few people um, of, of people that have some extra tools in their shop. They're going to donate to the kids. Okay, very good. All right, well, Mike, as long as you got the floor here, you want to go ahead and tell everybody, uh, well, you already told them who you are, but you want to tell them where they can find you and, and plug yourself a little bit? All right. Um, all my social media links are over at my website, MertzkeyCustomWoodworking.com. Uh, I'm most active on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can search me just under either Mike Mertzke or um, Mertzke Custom Woodworking. Okay, very good. Thanks for being with us tonight, Mike. Thanks for having me. Okay, next, uh, I'm just going to go down uh, since we started in the middle here of the list. Uh, how about you, Richard? Uh, you want to uh, tell everybody where they can find you and plug yourself a little bit? Yeah, name's Rich Muller. I go by uh, Shade Tree CNC. You can find me on uh, Facebook uh, under Rich Muller or uh, Shade Tree CNC. I post on both. Uh, I occasionally do. Uh, Snapchat and Instagram, but most of my stuff, uh, when I put stuff up, I put it up on uh, my YouTube channel, Shade Tree CNC. 
Okay, very good. Uh, next, we'll go with uh, Russ Battles. I see you snuck in here, Russ. It was not for lack of trying. <laughs> uh, yeah, my name's uh, Russ Meadows. Y'all can find me on Facebook under that name or on uh, Facebook, uh, my page, Rusty Nails Woodshop, and on Instagram under the same name. Okay. Thanks for being with us tonight, Russ. Next, Thank we you. have Melinda Davies. Hello, guys. It's Melinda Davies. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. That's the only place I'm at right now. Okay. Uh, next, we have uh, Mark Lindsay. Hey, everybody. It's Mark Lindsay. How you doing? Uh, you can find me on uh, Facebook mainly under this name, Mark Lindsay, and I also have a YouTube channel here under this name, Mark Lindsay. And when I can remember, I'm on Instagram, which I haven't for about the past month. Uh, I'm also on Instagram, so I think I guess I need to post something there. But um, most active on Facebook. So, and I'm monitoring the chat. I don't know why there's not going to be a lot of questions tonight, but I'm monitoring the chat. So, hi, y'all. <laughs> and, and I also want to say, Mark, you, I've been reading your um, your blog that you've got going now. That's uh, very interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I didn't mention it mainly because uh, I started a WordPress blog just kind of chronicling my adventures in CNC, and somebody reached out to me and offered uh, up uh, some web hosting. So I'm in the process of moving a two-day-old blog over to my own website, and there will be an announcement on that later on when I, when I can release it and let it go public. Okay, very good. But, yeah. And I, and I also noticed that you uh, are doing your little video series. Oh, yeah. I've, I've started a video series on my YouTube channel uh, basically to help answer some of the more basic questions that folks have. It, this is strictly for the beginner and strictly for the most basic steps. I uh, released the first video today. It was on how to uh, uh, do some basic modification to a DXF file. Uh, in the example, I made it a little bit taller and added some dimensions to it so I'm in the process of working on one now for uh, vCarve Pro and um, not going to be posting in any set schedule it's going to be as time allows but I'm working on another one now so you can head over to my YouTube channel and uh, find it there okay all right cool thank you thank all you. right and lastly over there on the far left we have my buddy Juan Take her away, Juan. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Juan Lopez. Uh, my YouTube channel is gcode1design, and I'm also on Instagram. Thanks, Dave. All right. Thanks for being here, Juan. Uh, okay, I guess without further ado, I want to go ahead and start showing some pictures here. Uh, let me get this uh, screen share stuff set up here. Our first, just bear with me if second folks so I get some of these folders I'm, I'm going to start with uh, when I asked uh, Mike Mursky to be on the show tonight uh, he said he was going to send some pictures and I said well you can go ahead and send them we'll look at them and, uh, but since he's on the panel we're not going to we're not going to let him be eligible for any of the gift certificates uh, or gift cards or whatever so so anyway okay I've got this folder open let me go back here and do a quick screen share but I do want to show some of your uh, some of your stuff, Mike. And I'm sure it's going to look pretty familiar to some folks. Everybody recognize what that is? That uh, one of the um, the calendar Mayan calendar. Yeah, that's uh, and and also. Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but all this work you sent, that's thats what was done when you had your x car correct? Yes. Okay, there's another shot. And, and I, I wanted to show these just because, uh, you know, the, in particular this Aztec calendar really shows the detail that you can get with a, with a CNC. And that was done as a V carve too, also not even as like a a, a 3D or, or 2.5D. That was just simply taking a 
SVG and then uh, making a BCAR file out of it in still just amazing detail. That's uh, 24 inches in diameter. Wow. Yeah, that's that's big. I th I've got one hanging on my wall here, and it's uh, 22 inches in diameter. So I can only imagine how long. How, how long did that take, by the way? I want to say it was about an eight-hour um, job. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's just uh, very cool. Okay, now what? tell us about this, Mike. What is this, uh, some kind of sign, I guess? Yeah, that, that's for um, uh, running metals, a little hanging rack for that. That was a, a client job I did, um, and that, that's just that's out of some pine. And um, I did a pocket cut with all those um, the emblems and stuff like that and then used paint. Um, to fill them in and then just sand it off the top layer. Gotcha. Yeah. Looks good. Okay, we're going on here. Now that's something I like. Yeah, that's... that's um, I make America flag coin racks and then also wall arts. This one's a coin rack and you can kind of see the coin trays on there for military challenge coins. And this is the, um, the burnt oak version that I do. Um, so I use the it's a Japanese finishing technique, shishugiban, where basically they char the wood, and then I used a, a V-carve bit to cut the stars out, and then also on the bottom stripe of that star, uh, the clients uh, wanted uh, their favorite Bible verse engraved in there. Okay. And then this is just a, a little sign with uh, Ernest Hemingway saying that a client wanted done in um, on an old piece of barn wood. And then the same thing, it was a uh, B-carp bit was used. Yeah, I, I like the big crack in it. It gives it some character. Well, can you lock onto your screen, Dave? Uh, yeah, let me... Yeah, we've got a couple of comments in the chat. If you could lock on your screen. As soon as somebody else talks, it jumps to them. <laughs> we can't see the pictures. Okay, yeah. Now i got to get... Let me quit sharing here for a second. Okay. So I'm locked on me. Now let me do the screen share. Yeah, I realized I didn't do that as soon as uh, I got back over there. Hey, Mike, uh, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, on that flag, were those were those stars raised a little bit, or were they flush with the uh, with the rest? Those are actually carved into it. So what I do for the burnt oak version is I'll take the that panel because I make it into three panels and and the, and the panel that where the stars go, the union, mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll, I'll char it and then put it on the CNC machine and then I have the stars laid out and then it, it cuts it out so where it, it makes a relief in that pocket with that V-carve bit, the, the clean oak shows through and that's what gives it the, uh, the kind oh. of visual. Oh, okay, I got you. That's neat. Okay. Now I want to, I know you can probably see my screen, I've got a list of folders here of people that have sent in different uh, photos and I'm, I'm going to start really in no particular order, I, I just start with uh, whoever sent in the first one and I know I got the first email from Rick Hutchison, so we'll look at some of the stuff he sent. Can everybody see that? Oh yeah, we can see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And is it staying on there now? Yep. Okay. Good. I'm trying to thumb through the emails here too to see. Uh, I don't think he said a whole lot about these. This is. Uh, it looks like that's maybe plywood there. I'm not sure. There's, uh, I guess he's showing uh, to show the size there. Those are really small. And I know he said he's using a custom one-off router 
uh, called a roundabout. Is is and I think he was on the show and showed these or on Russ's show maybe, and was showing these boxes that he makes. Um, okay. Next, I will go to Rick Nolan. I think he just sent one photo of a sign that he did. And let's see, who else have I got here? Becca Miller sent in some photos. Uh, we'll show you what she sent. And I thought this was kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if you can quite make that out. It says uh, Glory Bean Coffee Company. And I guess uh, it goes in a coffee shop somewhere. That's neat. Yeah, it is neat. And then here she's showing that should look familiar to a lot of folks. <laughs> that machine, it certainly looks familiar to me. Um, but yeah, she uh, she uh, Becca built one of the uh, the old sidewinder things, and that's what she's uh, make using to make these projects. And again, she put the uh, Glory Bean Coffee Company logo on it, and I guess that's what the marbles were for in that thing uh, earlier. It's just. Uh, some kind of board game. I'm not sure. Maybe somebody would know what that is, but I'm not sure what kind of game that is. Me either. But that's pretty cool. It is. Okay. Let's see who else. Uh, who was next here? Jerry Bonifield. He sent just a couple of pictures, I think. Whoop, that folder's empty. Oh, I know why. I think it's because he's, some people sent the pictures and they were in the actual email, so I'll have to try to dig those out. Uh, let's move on to Rob Schuster. Sent some photos. There's a nice project here. And I, he, let me read the, the text of the email. Because I was trying to make sense of the stuff across the bottom, and uh, he had kind of explained it in this email. He says the uh, Texas Longhorn was the first real project he did a little over a year ago. It was for his daughter's graduation. She is now a speech speech pathologist, and they used the phonetic alphabet used on the bottom of the sign. So that's what that is. That's why it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I was trying to figure out what it is. Okay, then the next picture. Well, let me come back to that one. Yeah, these uh, the Denver Bronco pictures or, or projects were for his father-in-law for Father's Day. Nice. So uh, go Broncos. Well, they all oh, have yeah, the color to their... Should have sent my Seahawks one. Ah, uh, no, Seahawks allowed. <laughs> <laughs> and then let me click back here. The Packer uh, NFL sign he says was for himself. That's cool. And he said these NFL signs started out as cedar fence slats from Home Depot. Oh wow! That's it looked wow. like cedar. Yeah, it's neat. Yeah, 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 pretty cool. Turned out really nice, Rob. Okay, and here is, uh, he, he said, and I'm going to read the email here. He says, my machine is a Gatton Sidewinder mostly. I built it so it can stand, so I can stand it up and roll it out to the corner of the garage when not in use. So wow. I don't think you can see it because this, or at least maybe you can. I, I'm seeing this thing about stop sharing, but there's right down in here, you see some casters, I think. That's pretty so, impressive. Yeah, I thought so too. When I when I looked at that, I thought, yeah, that's kind of cool. That and let me uh, let me kind of rotate it around once. Uh, maybe it's not gonna let me. Okay, I guess it won't let me. 
But uh, yeah, that's kind of a, a ingenious way of uh, saving some space there and still being able to have a CNC, which I thought was pretty cool. That's not an option you offer on your plan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have that option. I, I will. I do want to talk about my plans here in a little bit, though, too, because, uh, like I said, since uh, since I don't have a sponsor, I'm just going to plug myself a little bit later. Hey, there you talk go. About my plan, so. Uh, okay, so that's uh, that's Rob Schuster's. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I think we covered all of those. So let's go back to next. We have uh, Al Forte, and I think Al is over in the chat. If I'm not mistaken, I think I saw him over there. Oh, I see Becca's over there too. Hey, Becca. Uh. Okay, so let's take a look at one of these. And I think he had a, uh, yeah, he says, here's his email. He says, just been keeping it simple, making some signs. The Chief Dan George sign was done in with the X car with a 1 16th inch bit. He used a round over on the outside. And the paint, the painted one, okay, let me move over here. Yeah, the painted one was done with both a quarter-inch bit and a one-sixteenth bit. I really enjoyed painting and then putting semi-gloss over the maple. So thank you, Al, for sending that those photos in here. Oh, I see Rob. Yeah, Rob's in the uh, chat over there as well. Yeah, we got a bunch of folks watching tonight. Good. Okay, moving on. We've got uh, Ted Krieger. I hope I'm saying his name right. Where are you, Ted? There you go. And he's sent a bunch of photos. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm thinking that this first picture. Let me read the. Let me read the email so y'all can get the story behind it here. He says that uh, somebody had a 1940s child's rocking horse and wanted him to repair it. And I think that's what we're looking at there. I think that's the original rocking horse. And then he decided to, I guess, make some patterns or whatever and, and drew it up and, and made his own. So I've got some different photos of it that he sent here. Here you can see he's done a little fancy engraving on there. That's neat. It is. Yeah, and that looks that looks like it's just uh, some pine there too. That's what it looks like. I don't know if he says. Oh no! It says he built it. It says it's red oak. I guess that's what he says. It looks like pine, but it says it's red oak. Maybe the handles. Yeah, yeah that maybe. looks like pine. That don't look like no oak. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But hmm, hmm. it's cool nonetheless. Yeah, it is. Whatever it is, it's cool. <laughs> okay, and there's a shot, and you see he's got the. I guess. Uh, Maybe his granddaughter's name there, Callie or whatever, put on it. So that, that looks pretty cool. And here's some other things he made. Um, I can't get these pictures any bigger. Cause he, he, he attached them inside the email too. But this is something he made. Yeah, there's a bigger picture. Um, where it would teach uh, teach somebody colors and shapes and stuff like that. Oh, so you can take them out and play some. Yeah, so you can, yeah, you can take them out and play with them and then put them back in and everything, help them to learn their name and colors and letters and all that kind of stuff. So that's, neat. that's pretty cool. And there, again, I can't get this picture any bigger, but there's he's got a modified Sidewinder. And I know his is, let me see, this email is pretty yeah, it's, it's a pretty good size one. I think he says somewhere in this email how big it is, but, uh, yeah. A four yeah. by six? 
Yeah, I think I think it's a, a six foot long and I don't know five or six feet wide or something like that. It's it's pretty big. So. Okay, moving on. I have. Let's see here. I'll forte take. Mark Graves sent some photos. And I don't know if Mark's in the chat or not. I haven't seen him, but he sent a bunch of photos. Ooh. And we'll get started looking at these here. And this here he's showing, here you can see kind of a, you know, some kind of a sidewinder, you know, plan build back here, plywood CNC. And it looks like from these photos here, because I've already had a chance to look at these, it looks like this was too big to fit on his machine, so he ran part of it that way, flipped it around, and ran the other part this way. And I love this shot because I'm looking at all that dust on that keyboard, and I'm like, yeah, I can relate to that. <laughs> uh, and then there's the finished project. I was relating to the monitor on the floor, too. Sometimes you got to put it where it'll fit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that's that's kind of a neat little project there. And Mark is uh, is in Canada somewhere, I believe. So I, I don't know whether that's supposed to be a metric scale here or what. I don't know whether it's inches or metric, but uh, very cool. Here's one of the signs he did. Wow. And that is wow. That, that is, is cool right there. That is wow. Shading under the wings and everything is awesome. Yeah. That that's that's. Pretty awesome right there, I have to say. You think he used a V-mit to make the lines in that thing? Um, or just a 116-mit? I don't know. It's, it looks like that that right in there, if you can see my mouse, it looks like yeah. that may be... Right? The way the shadows... Sh the way the shadows yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it makes me think that that's a, a V-bit there. Um but the straight lines on the plane itself is what I was thinking about. And I was wondering. Oh, oh, okay. Um, the little tiny, yeah. yeah I would guess that's probably a real fine uh, VB. It could be. Too. I don't know. We'll have to have Mark on the show to. Uh, yeah, that's some great detail, and I love how I love projects like that where they they still have quite a bit of wood grain showing, but they add a lot of really good vibrant colors to them. Yeah, yeah. That that thing just pops, doesn't it? That's probably. I don't know if that was painted or was that just like a gel stains or something. It was airbrushed, or you mean the the plane the itself? Yeah, I know the wood. I can see that, but oh, I've got um, I've got Mark in the chat here chatting with him, and he says uh, all those detail lines, everything was V carved in. It's all done with a V bit. Sweet. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for being on there, Mark. Uh, that is really awesome. And it, like I said, he sent a bu bunch of pictures, folks. Here's another one that looks like uh, a business card display for a company. And again, he's got some uh, colors that really pop on that thing. That is very cool. And I think the I think the smile on that kid's face pretty much says it all there. Right. <laughs> That's neat. That is. Way cool right there. Back to the dreams. Another neat little uh, little sign. And that's just, I mean, that's just cool the way he does that, that microphone there. That, it really looks like a microphone, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah, that almost, I mean, it's so good, it almost looks like it's a decal stuck on there or something. It's just, yeah. it's just really awesome work there. You see Russ Clarity, he's got to sing for that thing. <laughs> okay, my mouse just froze up, so let me uh, go to plan B with my finger. Wow, look at the size of that. Yeah, I think... Yeah, now I got my mouse back in order here. I think this is just a close-up of a part of this, and I think what that was a close-up of is that, if I'm not mistaken. 
That's some great detail, though. It looked yeah. like that fire hydrant uh, on that, uh, that little decal in the front looked like that was burned in. It didn't look like it was carved. It looked like it was burned. It, it's hard to tell, though, with a Canadian quarter, though, if maybe we could get a U.S. quarter so we have a known size. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's one in every crowd. Uh, okay, uh, that's two minutes in the penalty box, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, you put a chat on the tweet. Where that came from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, th this stuff is just really cool. Okay, now this one, i got to tell you, like I said, I've already had a sneak peek at all these photos, but this one, the only question I have for Mark is, can can he build one big enough for me to fit in? Because this, this looks like, I don't know what he's using. This looks like this might be SolidWorks or something or some kind of 3D modeling software. I thought SketchUp when I first saw it. You know, well, maybe it is. I don't know. Now, here you can see there's the uh, his machine that he's built, uh, and he's cutting out the parts for this thing. And there he, it looks like he's getting some help there. No, no wonder all this stuff's good. Look, he's got help in the shop. Right. <laughs> okay, but but check check this thing out. Wow. That is cool. Yeah, is that, <laughs> is that not cool or what? Uh, okay, there's, a good, there's a good shot of his machine back there, and it looks like it's a little oversized from, you know, it looks like he stretched things out a little bit when he built his, too. But that Mark is... Says, Mark says uh, that was SolidWorks. Okay. Yeah, I thought I, I thought I recognized that sky blue uh, uh, background there. Okay, here's another little uh, another little sign he made for somebody. So yeah, this uh, and I, I hope uh, you know I know we've got a bunch of people watching. I hope the people that are watching are enjoying looking at these because this just gives you. Especially the people that uh, you know are either brand new to CNC or maybe they haven't even uh, taken the leap yet. You know, just gives you an idea of some of the things you can do with with the CNC. And again, you know, this isn't anything fancy. This is something he built. Um, you know, so he's he's getting all this uh, this detail and and accuracy from from the machine he built. Yeah, Mark's saying that's a four by four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I think he had mentioned that once before when when he was in a hangout with us. So yeah, it looks like we've covered all his stuff. Okay, and I think we've got uh, one more thing, and then I'll try to find Jerry Bonifield stuff. Um, let's see here. Let's go to. Michael Chipster, and I saw Michael hanging out over there in the chat area a while ago, and Michael sent a bunch of stuff to look at, and I did print off an email so I can kind of give you the backstory to some of this stuff here. Okay, th these first ones that he sent... Uh, he says these were done with a one-eighth ball nose and designed in V-carve. And I, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, all of these he's using one-eighth bits, and, that, and that's because he's got a uh, an X-carve. So, which, you know, not to knock the X-carve, but to me that just makes it that much more impressive to know that somebody with an X-carve did this quality of work. So, yeah, he's been he's been turning out some really cool stuff lately. Right. Yeah, that's uh, the Texas stuff is really cool. Let's see, there's another one. That's really good. Right on. I'm gonna have to vote for that one. <laughs> I don't okay, know. I'm from California. <laughs> okay, there's uh, there's a kind of cool one from uh, Louisiana that he did. I like that one too. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah, and that's kind of a hard state to do, looks like, with all that stuff around there. Yeah, that's a lot of detail. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do that with my scroll saw. 
Here's a colored shield thing. Okay, now this one is really cool. I think it's. Uh, I'm not a. You know, of course, I'm. I'm an Alabama fan. So, uh, <laughs> but this is uh, the LSU uh, Tigers. If you can see the tiger. See the tiger in it. Yeah. In it. Wow, that's neat. Yeah, isn't that kind of cool? That is. Yeah, that's very cool. I just can't stand LSU. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I'm an Alabama fan, so. Uh, Come on, Russ. I'm a Longhorn. I can't help it. <laughs> okay, now let's see. Uh, what are you saying about these? Okay, I guess all uh, all of these, I guess, were designed in VCar Pro and, and then cut out with a 1.8, uh, 60 degree V bit or a 1.8 ball. There's another nice little little sign there. That's cool. That all these, not. all these people who can paint inside their V carving and not make a mess on the top are really bugging me. <laughs> I know, I know. Actually, it's kind of pissing me off, Mark, because I, I cannot do stuff like that with paint. Paint and, and me do not get along very good. So, yep. I try. That's why I'm waiting on Miss Melinda. I know she could give me some lessons. Yeah. But that that right there is very cool. I'm I'm betting that's probably sitting on a teacher's desk now somewhere. Here's uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Man, I should have sent my Seahawks. <laughs> yeah, and I remember him posting something about uh, asking a question about if anybody's ever used those tabs as a as a design feature, and I see that's what he's doing here. Very cool, Michael. Excellent, excellent. That looks really good. That's yeah. Cool. Very nice. Cool. And again, folks, you know, all this, all this Michael stuff was done with an X carve. So there's hope for uh, X carve yet, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, Michael's in the uh, chat, and he says, for the record, he's a uh, OU guy himself. But when people pay, he'll make them an LSU sign. Yeah, that's right. right. You, yeah. <laughs> And I see, uh, I see Jim Johnson over there says "Roll Tide, Dave." That's that's <laughs> that's my thing. Yeah. That hurts, but you have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had to make cowboys. Oh, oh thank gosh. God. Thank God. I hope you got good money for it. <laughs> yeah, I charge it extra. Oh. <laughs> and he lives right down the road from him. <laughs> yeah. Another cool sign. Now I'm assuming, Mark, maybe you can answer in the chat. I'm assuming what you're doing is is painting this and then and then just sanding it off to get it off the top. Or are you, are you that good? You don't get it. I'd have it slopped all over every place if I did it. That would be my thought too, because I'd do the same. So. Okay, I think that's uh, all the photos. Let me go. Uh, let me see if I can find. Ah, I don't see it over here. Okay, Michael's over here in the chat, and he says he seals with lacquer, then he paints, then he sands off the lacquer from the surface. Okay. I see Melinda nodding her head. Well, that must be it. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Everybody got a thumbs up on that one. Yep. Okay. I'm going to have to try to dig around to find the uh, the photos that Jerry Bonifield sent. I know it was like a 3D carving, but I don't know what I did with it. So uh -oh. let, me, let, me, let me unplug my little... Uh, can you all see me? Yep. 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 Not that that's any big deal, but... <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm going to unplug my mouse here. I'm, I'm running out of USB ports on this laptop. Let me plug this uh, flash drive in. I may have had them on there because I don't want to leave him out. And, of course, idiot, you know, the mouse doesn't work once you unplug it, so quit moving it around.
Okay, I guess I might have to apologize to Jerry because I don't see his stuff on here. I don't know why. I thought sure I had it moved to that folder. But apparently, I did not. Unless I just put it somewhere else. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I put it, so I apologize to you, Jerry. But uh, anyway, I guess that's uh, all of the photos I have. Is, does anything stick out in anybody's mind? A lot of good, uh, a lot hey, of good a lot, work there. A lot of good stuff. But you're gonna have to go over them all again. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got ni uh, 19 minutes left. Uh, <laughs> Like I said, I'm I'm not going to vote, so uh, I, I, I'll let y'all think about it a minute, and I'll plug uh, plug myself. You know, now's the time. Uh, a word from our sponsors. <laughs> I wanted to show this because I don't ever talk really about this on the show, but uh, if there's any people out there watching uh, that you know have not fully taken the CNC plunge yet and are thinking about it or whatever. Um, I do have plans available uh, where you can build, uh, you know, a plywood CNC, very much like a lot of the ones you saw in the pictures uh, that we're showing tonight. Um, and you know, you can get uh, full-scale PDFs printed out, tape the things together to make a paper template, cut out your parts, or if cutting parts isn't your thing, you can order uh, some pre-cut parts for me. And I just thought I would show tonight because I've been cutting parts out there on that big green monster today when you get the parts from me you get extra little things uh, just you know just because I'm a nice guy like that but you get stuff where you know you get little pockets like this you see these little indentations here where I'm already marking your drill holes your pilot holes uh, you know, this is the where your Acme nut would go. That's what that's for. If I can get it fit in there without my glasses. You know, that lines that up so that, you know, kind of locates it for you. And like right there, I've even milled a little pocket there where your Acme, I don't know if I can hold on to it. If the Acme nut, oh, set this <laughs> so that'll set in there real nice. You know, which, you know, not that you couldn't do that if you had a CNC to make these parts, but, uh, you know, if you're cutting them out with paper, you're probably not going to spend the time to do the pockets and stuff like that, which you don't have to do. I'm just saying that if you buy the kits from me, you get all these extra little niceties just because that's the way I am. That's how I roll. So anyway, just thought I'd uh, plug that a little bit. Um and if uh, and if orange is your thing, you can go to that other website, www.garageworkscnc.com, and check out some of the orange monsters that I have. And Mike, you've got one in your shop. I know Juan's got one. Russ is wanting one, I think. I'm still on the Sidewinder 1.0. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. There we go. Well, there won't be anything wrong with it when I get it back together. Excellent. Yeah, Mike's got a nice setup. I know Juan's got a nice setup. Uh, Russ, who's not with us tonight, uh, the other Russ, uh, Russ Clarity, uh, he uh, he picked one up uh, week four last, I think it was. I don't know. And anyway, he's got his going, and it's been posting a lot of pictures of uh, – signs and stuff he's been making with his so yeah I try to offer a lot of different options for folks that are trying to get into CNC you know I've got like I said I got the garage work stuff if you want the uh, steel frame good solid machine or if you want to build your own I got plans I got kits uh, that's it I'm done plugging myself <laughs> okay so what do you think uh, distinguished panel Somebody go first and tell me. Let's all right. Let me just start off. I'll go down the line here. And, and Juan, I'm gonna start with you since you're on the far left. 
You got any uh, any favorites out of those pictures we showed? Um, I do. I would say the plane and uh, with the maple leaf in the background mm -hmm. and uh, the Louisiana sign. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the last one, the rocking horse. Okay. So I know the plane was uh, Mark Graves. The Louisiana sign was Michael Chipster. And the rocking horse, that was uh, Ted Krieger, right? Right. Right. Okay. You're up next, Mark. What oh, did okay. You like? Um, I liked Mark's aircraft sign, too, for first. And um, for second, I like Ted Krieger's rocking horse myself. Okay. And then I got to give uh, Rob Schuster a huge thumbs up on that fold-up sidewinder. I think that was my favorite, but I don't know if that counts because was it made with the C and C? Well, I mean it. It is a C. It, it is a C and C, but that's just cool. That's Parts of it were probably made with a C and C. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Okay, Melinda, what uh, what are you thinking? Can't hear you. Don't have any audio, Melinda. Now you're muted. Nope, still nothing. Okay, we'll work on your audio there. Keep wiggling wires or something, and we'll go on to Mike uh, Mike Mertzke. What do you think, Mike? There was a lot of good ones. It's uh, definitely a, definitely a hard one. I'm I'm gonna have to uh, kind of mirror what Juan said. Um, that plane, the detail on there, the colors. Um, I mean, just the detail alone. That was that's pretty sick. So, um, and then. Uh, Seconded at the Louisiana sign and then the rocking horse, but um, definitely a lot of great, great stuff out there. Yeah, you know, that's one reason why, I, I, well, I really didn't have an idea for a show, for one. And then I thought, well, you know what, let's just do a, uh, yeah, Melinda's going to hold the sign up. <laughs> That'll work. Um, you know, I thought this will be a cool way to show folks just some of the really cool things you can do with a CNC. Uh, and just some of the pictures, that, you know, I'm kind of in agreement with y'all on, on the, I think that plane just kind of stands out uh, above everything else. But, uh, Richard, what, what do you think, buddy? Well, I'm going with the, uh, what you can do is, uh, as if you're just starting out. And I'm going to go with the rocking horse as being my first, first selection, because I think a beginner could probably... Uh, I manage that one, mm -hmm. and then and then the glory bean game. I kind of like that one as being a uh, the next step up. And then I'll have to agree with the rest of the crowd here with the with the plane as far as detail is concerned. But I'm looking at that as being the more advanced um, uh, CNC, and so that's the reason for my ranking. I see. Very good. Yeah, yeah, they were, I, I really like that uh, the game board and the the card holder thing that she that Becca did with the uh, what was it Glory Bean Coffee Company that was very cool. Okay, Russ Meadows, what do you think, buddy? Okay, um, I like that plane. I like that plane a lot. I like it for the detail that's in it. Uh, I know that uh, there's some carvers out there that do hand carving that, that can get detail like that, and uh, that really stands out to me. And uh, for my second choice, uh, that, that uh, stinking Louisiana LSU tiger sign, I had to go for that one. And uh, <laughs> they, uh, the folding CNC, I like that. If you can't go with that, then I'd, I'd go with the rocking horse. And uh, since I can't go with uh, Mike Mercy's uh, flags, yeah, yeah, so I well, his flag, <laughs> his flag was, uh, was neat. Yeah, that now yeah, Mike has some cool stuff too. You okay, can all have your own. 
<laughs> I might try to make one of my own. <laughs> well, then, uh, somebody put a suggestion over there in the uh, Hangout chat to maybe drop out, you know, hang up and then come back in, and maybe your audio will work. That's what it did to me at the beginning. Yeah, I don't know if you want to try that. Or else you can, hold your fan up. You can just hang up and leave the, the Hangout and then come back with that same link. If you want. That's what we want. <laughs> okay. I don't know. If... Okay, there she goes. So she'll come back in here in just a minute. Uh, are we doing on time here? Is there time for a question for uh, one of our panel members, uh, Dave? Sure. While Melinda's coming back in. Okay, uh, this is for Rich. Uh, Philip Barnes wants to know, uh, have uh, have you had any stretch in your chain drive? He's looking at building one about eight feet. He just wondered if there was any stretch in, involved. Yeah, my, my uh, x-axis on my CNC is uh, 120 inches. I adjusted it two years ago. I've not touched it since. Okay, does that get, that cover you there, Philip? <laughs> you know, you know, there you go, Melinda. Can you, hear you? you can hear me. Okay, yeah. tell us your tell us your picks real quick. Well, I picked the Rocky Horse in the puzzle. The guy did. I think that was Ted. That would be my number one, uh, and it was really close. Everybody was so awesome. Um, and I really liked Becca's card game, the box, the cards in the box, and the game. That that was awesome. So that would be my two. Okay. What 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 was your number three? Oh, am I supposed to have a number three? Okay, I got that. Yeah, because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a fifty dollar uh, gift card, and then the second and third place will get will split and get twenty five bucks each. Um, I really liked Mark's the growth chart, the signs, and all that he did. Those were awesome. Mm -hmm. That would be number three. Okay. All right, uh, judges. I'm. I'm. I kind of took some notes here, but I'm thinking it's pretty much uh, overwhelming in favor of the uh, the plane sign for Mark Graves. Are we in agreement there? Yes. Yep. Okay. So, Mark, I will be. Uh, getting a, an email. I'll go back and check your email and get your address and I'll send you a $50 gift card. And I'll probably, I haven't even bought them yet, folks. I'll probably make them uh, Visa gift cards or whatever so you can use them wherever, you know, if you want to go to Lowe's or Home Depot or your favorite wood place or whatever, or you don't, or, you know, wherever you want to go, buy whatever. Uh, okay, then it looks like we've got uh, Mike Michael Chipster coming in. Uh, him and Ted coming in to split the other uh, two gift certificates. So uh, I'll get an address from both of those guys and get those in the mail as well. Uh, and I saw, man, the chat's going by so quick now. I saw somebody here. Let me put my glasses on. Can't see nothing without my glasses. Clifford Insco is asking, can we do another show and tell in a few weeks? Sounds like he's got some projects in the works. <laughs> sure, Clifford. I, th I, I don't know about you guys. I mean, we got 65 viewers, so uh, I thought it was kind of cool looking at other folks' work. You know, we may you know, try to do this uh, ever so often just to, just to see. Yeah, well, I, 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 I would I say think... we should do this regularly. Yeah, there's... Uh, well, you know, the, the thing about it is I spend so much of my time designing and building CNCs. I really don't get to play with mine that much, you know. I mean, <laughs> I ran one all day today. And what am I cutting? I'm cutting CNC parts, you know. <laughs> so I don't, have, I don't get a chance to really do any, uh, you know, anything half as cool as what we've seen tonight. And that's why I like seeing other stuff. I, I, I know I've seen a lot of your stuff, Mike, and, uh, I, you know, you, you just do awesome stuff. Uh, Juan is always posting stuff on Facebook, and, of course, I've been to Melinda's shop. I know what kind of awesome stuff she does. But, uh, yeah, I don't I don't really ever have time to really do projects like that. Uh, 
So it, it's it's a lot of fun for me to get to see just how talented other people are with the not just the design and programming, but the painting and the staining and finishing and all that stuff that I really suck at. So, well, Dave, you're a free man now. You have all the time in the world. Uh, yeah, but I. <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> And I'm I'm busier now than I ever was. <laughs> you know, like I said, I ran a machine all day today. What's today? It's Saturday. I'm you know, it's the weekend. But yeah, that's what happens. But uh, I mean, that's I'm I'm not complaining because you know that's the gotta, price of fame. Daddy's yeah. got to eat, so right yeah, on. It's working. Uh, uh, we everybody over here in the chat. I say everybody, mainly me, trying to uh, talk Mr. Mark Graves into getting going on that YouTube channel and teach us all how to paint like that. That man is fantastic. Oh, yes, awesome. Yeah, I think, yep. uh, and and you know, I saw, um, I met Michael Chipster. I'm going to give a, a plug for him because I, I met him the other night uh, when Russ was up here, and we were we were just on a. It wasn't a live show, but we were just doing a hangout, and, and Michael Chipster come on, and that was my first time meeting him, and he showed some pictures uh, of some stuff he did, and, and again, he's doing all this with an X car, and I thought, man, this I got to have this guy on the show, and him and Mark Graves, uh, of course Melinda, we got to get back on here when she's ready. Uh, we've got a lot of talented folks to uh, to have on this show. And it's just, you know, whenever they can work it in their busy schedules, uh, I'm wide open. Yeah, we'll get uh, we'll get all these folks on here. Yeah, well, your secret's out uh, there, Mark, so um, you can't hide forever. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, well, you know, we had him on one night. Mm -hmm. and he Mike had, Gipsy, yeah. Well, no, that was the, the hangout thing. I'm thinking we had oh, Mark okay. Graves on the show one night. But he was uh, first. He had some audio trouble, I think. Ah, uh, okay. And then we got then we got the audio back, but the, his his picture was in like it was like black and white or something. It's, yeah, okay. He's the one from Canada. The mood. Yeah, we didn't get good video, so uh, you know, hopefully he can get all that squared away, and we'll we'll have him on the show. And like I said, Michael Chipster and. And if and Mark, if there's anybody else out there in the chat, I don't know if anybody said anything, but you know, this show we're not locked into a set panel here. Anybody can come be on the show if they well, just, if they know. want to send me an email and and uh, you know, about all it really requires is you know a, you know got to have a pretty decent internet connection uh, and a webcam and, and and a mic and or a headset or something and you know. I'm, I'm I'm open to having different folks on the. Well, the it's show. it's funny you should say that, Dave, because I got a question here that came up uh, at the beginning of the show uh, from a gentleman by the name of Thomas Grin. He says, uh, "Before you signed on, Mark, I asked a question about Fusion 360 and Macintosh environment. Is it possible to find somebody to represent that contingent on your panel?" So if we have anybody who's a Mac operator and uses Fusion 360, that yeah. might be uh, something to think about. I don't, uh, you know, I, I'm a SolidWorks user, a, a Mach 3 user, and a VCar Pro user. And I know just enough about all of those to be dangerous. Uh, <laughs> I'm right there with you. anything else... I know, I know nothing. You know, we we had Marlo on one night, and he was talking about that Linux CNC and stuff like that. I know nothing about that. But if anybody wants to come on and and share their knowledge and experience with that stuff, come on and 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 be on the show. You know, we don't have to just talk about stuff I know, because heck, I don't know a whole lot really. Um. <laughs> well, we're always looking for new topics, basically, to expand the show. So. I mean, uh, there's a lot of questions out there. It seems to be yet to be answered because I see in the in the chat earlier we we started an hour earlier before you came on and chatting in the uh, chat room, and they were asking quite a few questions. Yeah. If, yeah. Uh, so if uh, if so if, there you go. If you're a Mac expert, a Fusion 360 expert, something like that, get an email into Dave. 
Yeah, and I, I know we've had some people on here. Well, let, let me think. We don't have anybody on here right now. But I, I'd like to get some folks on here uh, like Michael Chipster to, uh, you know, that can represent the X-Carves a little bit. You know, there's a ton of those things out there, and I think they've kind of gotten a bad rap. I'm, I kind of give them a bad rap myself sometimes, and I'm guilty of that. But, uh, you know, there are some people that if you take the time, you can really do some cool stuff with an x -car. Uh Michael Chipster is a, a perfect example of that tonight. So I'd like to have somebody come on that can uh, can say some good things about an X-Carve and, and maybe share some some things that they've done to get theirs to run correctly uh, to help out all the other folks because I know there's a ton of them out there. Isn't that, isn't that right, Mike? I don't know for how long, though, Dave. He was just saying a while ago on the chat that uh, he needs to get himself a orange beast. <laughs> so Who, Who's that? I don't, I, I don't know how long he's going to last. <laughs> Well, he can he can come on and talk about the orange bees too. Michael uh, Chipster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Jerry Brown keeps talking about X carves and wanting to upgrade too. So. Yeah. Well, Jerry Brown, if you followed his Facebook post, and I don't know if Jerry's over there in the chat or not, Jerry Brown doesn't really have an X carve anymore. He's got a. <laughs> it's, it, it's morphed into something way more than an X carve. Yeah, it's oh, definitely yeah. a hybrid for sure. He, he's, I think he replaced the whole frame with a whole different kind of eighty twenty or something like that. It's way beefier. I mean, yeah. it's 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 not really an X carve anymore. Yeah, I mean, he's about to put that new uh, water cooled spindle on there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> um, Tommy G's another one. Uh, yep. He's about. Uh, he just showed a picture of his uh, lead screws he just ordered. Uh, he's another one that's about to turn his X carb into a, a Frankenstein of a beast. Yeah, I've been I've been talking a lot with uh, Tommy G because he's uh, been Facebook messaging me left and right, asking about uh, some of the components I use. So I know he's he's getting ready to put lead screws and yeah, it's going to be a Frankenstein when he gets done. So him and him and Jerry's neither one. I mean, it X carb in name only. Uh, it's it's going to be uh, and it's got it's kind of going to be cool to see how they turn out. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I think that's one of the cool things that on the hobby CNC level, though, because no matter what, if you look at like some of the CNC machines we looked at, um, you know, some of the the kind of offshoots from your original Sidewinder to to whatever. I mean, everyone's that really gets into it takes whatever machine they have and they make it their own some way, whether it's by adding drag chains to it or a water-cooled super spindle. Yeah, yeah, and, and just like the, the new plans that I offer now, Mike, they're, they're, I was going to do a couple of different sizes, and then once I started drawing them and I got the first size done, I thought, this is just so easy to make it wider or longer. There's really no need to, to do another set of plans. Uh, you know the and and basically that hybrid that I've got out there on the uh, that green metal frame and Mike you saw part of it when you were here. Yep. Uh, that gantry is j basically just like the plans uh, that I offer now. Uh, you know it's got the wooden plywood gantry, and you talk about a beast. I've got the Porter Cable 7518 on there. That th that sucker weighs almost 15 pounds. And I got to tell you, I love it. I absolutely love that thing. Uh, I've already decided when I when I do the videos to build the, uh, you know, the build videos to go along with those plans, I'm going to make it a little bigger, and I'm, that's what I'm going to put it on. I'm going to put another 7518 on there. Those things are wow. I mean, go through some already. <laughs> Want to see those? Okay, I, I, I want to throw something into the people in the chat. We've got a lot of folks in here talking about uh, using Fusion 360 and using uh, various, you know, uh, SolidWorks and all this other good stuff. Send an email to Dave. Send an email to Dave and uh, have a chat with him, and uh, maybe we'll get you on the show. And I also want to give a shout out. We've got people, believe it or not, from Australia watching tonight. We got one guy from the Ukraine. 
Hi, y'all. <laughs> I I know I've been kind of glancing down at the the viewers. My screen down here has like right now it's showing 59, and at one point we had almost 70. I think that's the most we've ever had that I can recall. Uh, now it just jumped to 61. So yeah, we got a bunch of folks watching, uh, and I appreciate all you guys, uh, especially you guys over here. You know, it's almost 10 o'clock here, and if you're over there on the in England or somewhere like that, I know it's really late. So I appreciate y'all staying up and watching us live. Um, well, the folks in Australia are getting ready to go to lunch, so I, you know, that's that's not, but it's Sunday to them. Yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it's good that we got this many folks watching. Like I said, this whole thing is this this whole show isn't about. Uh, you know, CNCs and stuff that I make. It's about all kinds of hobby CNCs. That's what I want the show to be about. Uh, and I, I'm hoping we can find somebody who's uh, pretty proficient in Fusion 360. I don't think it's going to be that hard. I've seen a lot of talk about it on uh, Facebook. So surely we can uh, find somebody that, that's, you know, pretty handy at it and have them on the show and... and Maybe can answer some questions and give some pointers and do some demonstrations, that kind of thing. And because uh, I'm I'm up to talk about anything, you know. There's there's a lot of a lot of stuff. I love watching, uh, you know, seeing the different things that people have done to machines, whether it's my plans or somebody else's plans. Because uh, there's always somebody that that does something that's just totally different than what anybody else has done before. So I love love watching that. So, we we're are, a group of like-minded people. Exactly. Yeah, a bunch of CNC geeks. <laughs> and I say that as a term of endearment, you know. Right. <laughs> I'm here to shout. <laughs> let, let me pose a question to the rest of the group here. Um, I've been thinking about this for a long time. I noticed that most of us now are Mach 3 uh, users. Uh we should be able to start sharing programs. G code. Are you talking about files? Uh, yep. I mean, if I created like the the Marvel maze that I'm working on now, to be able to post that somewhere to where you could download the G code and just go cut. Yeah. Well, I know we've shared a few things, not a whole lot of stuff. Uh, in what is it, Gatton Router, Router Builders? Builders. Yeah. Group on Good. Facebook. Yeah, I've and posted a few things there. Have we have we shared anything in the GarageWorks CNC group yet? Any files that no. you know of? I haven't seen any. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, think, we, I don't even know if I posted the dust collector shoe over there or not. Yeah, maybe not. I tell you what, I got a better one now though. And I know you've you've already cut the other one, haven't you, Mark? <laughs> oh yeah, that's okay though. I I did a little bit of modifying to it. Okay, well maybe yeah, you may have fixed it. I I know the one I I'm using now, uh, and the one that Mark's got, and I don't know if you changed this or not, but the one I used on my old one, I had the router, and then I had the the vacuum hose just to the right. And I decided this time that it just made a whole lot more sense to put the vacuum hose straight in front. And I I always like to use those Rockler clamps. I'm a clamp guy. I like to clamp my work down. But I found that what I do is I inst I take the uh, Rockler clamps and instead of using the T track on this new table, I've just got 196 holes with uh, quarter twenty T nuts on four inch centers. So I just use a quarter twenty nut, or actually it's like a machine screw, and I just use it. It takes a little more time. It's not as handy as having that knob, but when you're using that knob, that knob is always in the way when you're trying to use a dust shoe. So when you're using just a machine screw and you're screwing it right down, everything is so low, you can go right over it with that dust shoe and it doesn't hang up on the knob and just seems to work out so much better. So I, I had, a, you know, I'm very happy with the, the, the dust shoe I made. It didn't suck everything up, but what it didn't suck up, it kept right there on the table. I had literally nothing on the floor when I got done, and I'm talking about cutting a whole whole mess of plywood today. 
So wow. I'm a happy camper. If it don't if it don't suck it up and go in the you know, I got a little separator thing with a trash can. Uh, if it don't go in there as long as it keeps it on the table, I'm happy. All right, we got anything else going on? Anything, any other questions in the chat, Mark, before we sign off here? Yeah, there's one question from a gentleman, but he's asking uh, some um, specifics on pricing of the garage works. I'm sending him to your website. Yeah, yeah, all that information's over there. Yeah. Um, basically, Gimp Geek, send Dave an email through his website. He's the man to talk to. He's got all your questions covered. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, and if you got any questions after you get over there, I, you know, it's, I don't know how you'd have a question about pricing because it's all pretty clear over there what what stuff is. But uh, anyway, well, if there's nothing else, I guess we're going to uh, go ahead and sign off here. Maybe hang out a little bit. So thanks, uh, guys, for being my my panel of judges. That was a lot of fun tonight. I hope you guys had fun. I did. I, oh, I thought it was great. Oh, and thanks, great. thanks all you guys over there in the chat. Uh, we had just an awesome crowd tonight. Sixty-two watching. Yeah. yeah. And one yeah. guy is saying, "When are you going to start building videos for your latest plans?" He's already started building his, but don't want to get too far ahead of you. Oh, <laughs> that's well, what I'm saying. I, I, I appreciate you hanging around waiting on me, but. I tell you what, I'd really had had planned on starting that this weekend, but I don't think I'm going to have time to get to it because I'm cutting everybody else's kit. <laughs> you know, uh, when the customer comes first, I, I'll get all those done. When I when I get caught up with those, um, then I'll then I'll do it. And I didn't really do a build video on the uh, the big green one out there, but like I said, if you I did do a video, uh, you know, showing it running and stuff, talking about it a little bit. It's basically the same. I mean, this this design, I ain't kidding you folks, this is, I have really made it even easier. I don't know, I, I thought the Sidewinder one was pretty easy a couple of years ago, but this one's even easier. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's basically like doing some woodwork and building a box. Because uh, I, I, used, I used deck screws to screw all my gantry together. Uh, the one thing that I did do different the, from the plans, and I don't really think you need to do it. I did it because uh, I knew I was going to be putting that big 7518 on this one, but I did double up on the uprights, so instead of just being one piece of plywood, it's two laminated together. Uh, and it also gives me a little more to screw into when I'm when I'm doing the uh, the cross members. But the designs call for another piece to get glued inside there, so you still have an inch and a half thickness to, to screw into. Uh, anyway, if anybody's got any questions on those, you know, feel free to email me or uh, Facebook <laughs> message me or whatever. Uh, you know, I, I, I spend all day, there, you know, out there working, whether it's in the garage or in my shop or whatever I happen to be doing, stopping in between and a answering questions, you know, throughout the day. So. Uh, it's not a big deal. Send me your questions, and uh, we'll try to get them answered. All right, I guess we're going to sign out of here. Uh, like I said, appreciate you guys hanging around on the panel, and, and thanks again for all the uh, viewers. Uh, hope you all keep coming back. We'll do the show and tell thing again. It was a lot of fun tonight. Um, so that means save your pictures, folks. Save yeah, if you got any, if you got project. any cool projects that, that you didn't send me tonight, you better hang on to them because we'll be doing this again. I, th I think we ought to try to do this maybe once a month or something. Wow. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I just think it'd be be kind of cool to see uh, mm -hmm. see what other folks are doing. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's going to do it. Thanks, guys. We'll see you all next week. Hit the thumbs up on the way out the door. There you go.